Hi, this is the Rachel Ham Show. I'm Rachel Ham, and this, of course, is Marshall Ham. Marshall Ham, the husband. <laughs> yeah. And we wanted to talk to you about marriage. We are actually on a little romantic getaway for our 27th wedding anniversary Ooh. right now. 27 years. It's a long time. It's a long time, it's but good. it's kind of flown. Yeah, kind of totally. In a way. Yeah. In a way, it feels like so long ago. <laughs> yeah. We were 20 when we got married. We're 47 now. Mm -hmm. I like to make it easy on people. It's 27. So they don't have to do the math. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's also to check our math and make sure we're right. Yeah, 27. <laughs> yes. It's nice that we got married on an even, like tw we got, we're 20. Mm -hmm. It's easy to add to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Easy to do the math. Yeah. Uh, but we have a fantastic marriage, and uh, we love marriage. We love each other. We have worked to have a good marriage. And, you know, as we've been talking about some of the things that we can do to help our country, um, as weird as it might sound, I definitely think working on having a great marriage, doing what you can do, so you're always only one of the people in the equation, right? But doing what you can do to have a great marriage is one of the the single most um, like significant contributions we can make to the country. Envision it with me. Imagine if most people in the country had good marriages. Mm -hmm. What would the country look like if most people had good marriages? I mean, really, it would be a completely different country, wouldn't it? Okay, but we can't control everyone, we can only control us, so I wanna to talk to you about doing what you can do to have a great marriage. So we're gonna give you three tips, and we have like 100 tips. We mm -hmm. actually think we might do, seriously, we might do like an online course about marriage because um, we just really are very happy in our marriage, <laughs> and we want other people to be happy in their marriage. And so, um, for a while I had thought that, that we didn't have the right to do a marriage course because we haven't had a lot of hard, like we haven't overcome a lot in marriage. We've always had a really good marriage. We've overcome a lot of things together in mm -hmm. the like things that we had to deal with together. You know, like when I went through my healing process, that was such a hard time, but we were in it together and it was never a hardship between us. Mm -mm. It was just a hard thing we were dealing with. Yeah. But, but then I felt like God showed me that that was not true, that I didn't have the right to speak about marriage because I've always had a good marriage or whatever. It, it was the opposite. It was like, well then just tell them how you do it, <laughs> right? Like. Yeah. You don't have to have overcome hard things or you know have like hardships in your marriage in order to speak on it. How about if I can just tell you we have a great marriage and we want to share some of the tips that we have learned that make our marriage great. And so, oh, I just thought of one more I want to add. Okay, so now we got four. We've got four tips now. <laughs> we're gonna do okay. four tips. Okay, we have 96 more after this. Yes, so yes, fine. but for this video, we're gonna talk to you about four tips. I'm so excited to see what the fourth one is. Yes, yeah. yes, okay. so it's gonna be a big surprise. Okay, so why don't you start with the first tip? The first tip is continue to date your spouse. Continue to court your spouse. Go on dates. We go on a date at least once a week, just the two of us. Mm -hmm. um, we did even when we were poor and just starting out our marriage, we did something to have a date night, McDonald's or a picnic <laughs> or whatever we could do. So, But I think that is really important to connect with each other and to just can constantly date your spouse and really um, don't don't give that up just because you landed your spouse. You continue to date and court your spouse. Well, and Marshall is so good about asking me to go on a date like every week. Often now it's text, like from <laughs> yeah. work, he'll text me and say, can I take you out Friday night? And it's some of my favorite texts that I get. Yeah. I don't really know that. No, yeah, so I love bad. it. Yeah. And then he'll, you know, either sometimes he'll decide where to go and he'll make a plan or he'll ask me if there's something I want to do. And, um, and she almost always says yes. So it's great. Well, I almost always say yes to the date and I almost always say yes to I know what I want to do. Yeah, that too. <laughs> I tend to know what I want. Yeah. So, um, so we go on dates every week. Now, when we were first married, the dates were like a little bit pathetic because we just mm -hmm. really didn't have money. We had four kids. We didn't have a ton of free babysitting. Um, and so it was it was super challenging. It was really tough. It gets easier as you go. It gets easier as your kids get older, as you don't need babysitters. But you know, for some of you, like you maybe have been married 50, 60 years. And I think that no matter how long you've been married, it's so important to be very intentional mm -hmm. about dates or that type of thing, like creating romance, uh, being intentional about connecting, and um, something you can do even like if you're getting a little bit stale and it's kind of like, okay, I don't know, what do we, we've talked about the same stuff, I don't have anything to talk about, whatever. Be intentional about that even, like mm -hmm. say, hey, let's read a book, mm -hmm. and on our date we'll discuss, we'll discuss our, the book we're reading. 
or watch this video or watch read a passage in scripture or something that we'll talk about yeah and so that we don't really have a tough time coming up with things to talk about but it's great to have something prepared in case it's like okay this is this is what we're going to talk about tonight well and sometimes i will make a list of things that i'm going to wait and talk about on the day because mm-hmm. you know sometimes it's like in the busyness of life um, you know, it's not the right time to talk about certain things. So sometimes I'll like kind of keep track, keep a little list of, okay, on, at date night, we can talk about these things. And so, so the first tip is continue going on dates, no matter how many years you've been married. And tip number two is, um, putting the, putting your spouse above yourself and their needs above yours. So, um, being selfless in that, just thinking about what your spouse would want, um, instead of yourself and if you're both doing that then you're always thinking of what the other one wants then you're both getting what you're wanting or needing Mm -hmm. so just constantly be listening intentionally listening to what they want something that they want Mm -hmm. or just knowing them and knowing what they would like in this certain situation or this circumstance or whatever it is but always just putting their needs ahead of your own I think that what you said was key about paying attention Mm -hmm. because I think that's part of what makes it feel so romantic and so loving is when like Marshall will pay attention to maybe something I showed interest in or like if my eyes kind of sparkled when I saw something, you know, he'll pay attention to that Mm -hmm. and he'll he'll get it for me or he'll, uh, you know, he'll ask me later about, you know, that thing or whatever. And so when we are paying attention to the little cues that your spouse gives and, and then are acting on it, it makes them feel so loved. Mm-hmm. And so um, I think that the putting their needs before yours is just an absolute cycle of delight. Mm-hmm. So you know, we can get into cycles of dysfunction and where you're in a, you have patterns of fighting about the same stuff or you know, having problems where you, you feel like it's cyclical. Well, the same is true in a good way. Mm-hmm. You can get into a cycle of goodness and putting each other's needs first really creates that. If I have a mindset of what does Marshall need? How can I be a blessing to him? How can I take care of his needs? Uh, and then I do that. And then it's like it's filling him up and mm-hmm. making him feel so loved and blessed. You instinctually want to do it back, mm-hmm. you know? So it creates this like cycle yeah. of I take care of him, he takes care of me. Mm-hmm. And then what's so so cool about it is when you're not trying to take care of your own needs, you're trying to take care of the other, and then they take care of yours, it's better than if you were taking care of your own needs. Because mm-hmm. your needs are getting met either way, right? But if someone else is really paying attention and trying to make sure your needs are met, now not only are your needs met, but you feel so tre- treasured and mm-hmm. cherished. And so, I do want to say though, like sometimes in marriage, especially if you're struggling in marriage or, you know, you're not in that cycle that's positive, it can feel like um, if you're the only one that's do, that's going to do the right thing. Like if you want to make a change right now in your marriage, you want to improve your marriage, and so you start looking for how you can you can be a blessing to your spouse, how you can take care of their needs. It can feel at first like maybe you're the only one doing it, but but just keep doing it. Be faithful in putting them first. And I think that something happens Mm -hmm. where, um, because I would say that Marshall put my needs before his own from day one, our entire marriage, he's always done that. I didn't at first. I got better at it with time, but the reason I got better at it was because he was so loving to me and so consistent in putting my needs first that it's kind of like after a while you're like, good grief, I am married to the sweetest man in the whole world. I want him, I want to make him happy. It was like, it was like he had to pour into me quite a bit before I really felt like I was rising up and doing the same for him. So if you're the only one that's doing it for a while, just, just be, be prayerful that it's going to pay off, that your spouse is going to come around, that, that while you're filling up their tank, it might take a little while for it to get full. Be prayerful that it will get full and that they will turn and do the same thing back. But it is somewhat instinctual, I think. When someone is taking care of your needs, yeah. you want to be good to them too. Yeah. So it just it, it creates that cycle of goodness in yeah. marriage. Okay, the third thing is? Communication. So um, obviously you hear that all the time, but I think it's specific communication. So like telling your spouse that they look great today and like, 
complimenting them on their hair or their makeup or what they're wearing or something like that. Um, just constantly making them, at least for me, I think that's one of the things that's really big for us is just making sure that Rachel knows that I think she looks beautiful no matter what. And so, um, and pointing those things out, not just saying it just because, oh, I need to say something to her today, but it's like meaning it, being sincere about it and pointing out specific things that you notice that look good or that she's doing well or something like that. But that's the kind of communication that I'm talking about. There's all kinds of forms of communication, but that's the one I'm thinking of. I think another form or not form of communication, but another way that it's important to communicate is needs that you have or desires that you have. I find that a lot of women mm -hmm. want their husband to do something and they're mad at him because he isn't doing it. Now, they've never told him that they want it. And it's a different, it's a whole different ball game. If you have told them and they're still not doing it, that's different. But a lot of women just want their husband to just know what to do. And I think that a lot of men want to make their wife happy. Yeah. They want a happy wife, happy wife, happy, happy life. That's, mm -hmm. that's pretty true, I think. Yeah. And most men that I find, they, they want to make their wife happy. Yeah. And if they just knew that their wife wanted that certain thing, like wanted them to maybe do something around the house or whatever, if they would just have known, they would have done it. And yeah. so I think it's important to communicate needs that you have or wants that you have. Like, hey, would you do me a favor? Can you please put your dishes in the dishwasher? It just, it just really frustrates me if I come in and I find a bunch of dishes in the sink. And can you, can you just, if you have like a cup of coffee or whatever, can you just stick that cup into the dishwasher? It just would, it just would really help me. Mm -hmm. and, and then I, <clears throat> often if I have something like that, you know, that I bring to Marshall, I say, oh, okay, yeah, I just didn't even think of it. Mm -hmm. And so... I think it's important, or like like birthdays. My birthday is really important to me. I love birthdays. <laughs> I've always loved birthdays. I love other people's birthdays. I just love birthdays. And so I communicated that really early on. Like my birthday, I really like my birthday. It's important to me. I want to do something special. Um, I really lo love my birthday. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, I want that to be a, a thing for us, right? Yeah. And so he was like, oh, okay, yeah. So he, it's on his calendar. He does not forget. He always has a <laughs> gift, always, you know, makes a, a extra special date but I think it's it was communication that was the key that that you're not looking for your spouse to be a mind reader yeah. and I think more more women than men want their spouse to be a mind reader it's like didn't you see that that needed to be done no they didn't not at all. actually they did not <laughs> <laughs> and I have four sons I've been raised with I've been around a lot of men my whole life and now even them surrounded still by you know the the men in my life with the four sons and Marshall and I find that in general they do not notice what I notice and they do not think of what I think of, but if I just ask them, they're happy to do it. Yeah, we're not intentionally so, not doing something that you see needs to be done. We just don't, we don't notice the same things. Yeah, so communicate, communicate those things and don't, don't expect them to be a mind reader. They're not, they're not great at that. No. You're, yeah, yeah. No. So, so communication is the third one. So now third you want one. the fourth I one. I have no idea what the fourth one is. Okay, but you're, so when excited. I say it, you're gonna be like, oh yeah. yeah. Okay, so when we first got married, somebody gave us some advice that I think has been one of the best things mm -hmm. ever, which was if you have something critical to say to your spouse or you have something you're not happy about for whatever reason, at, before bringing it up to your spouse, ask yourself this question. Is bringing up this issue worth ruining a whole day over? Mm -hmm. And then if you decide it's not worth ruining a whole day, let it go. Work at letting it go. Mm -hmm. Now, if you feel like you're gonna be resentful, if you let it go, then you gotta bring it up, right? You can't, can't be resentful. Resentment is a marriage killer. So don't move into resentment. If you can genuinely let it go, let it go. But just know you might ruin the whole day over it. Yeah. If there's a conflict and you're gonna bring it up, it could become a whole thing and the whole day you're kind of grouchy, your spouse is kind of grouchy, no one feels great about it or whatever, it, you know, it can just. But it's better to ruin that one day than to ruin weeks or months of just feeling resentful and yes. seeing something that you want changed, but your spouse doesn't know that you want it changed and so you're just mad for weeks instead of one day. Yes. Better to ruin that one day. Yes. So yeah, pick your battles. Yes, pick your battles <laughs> is the, yeah, the, the bottom line of that is pick your battles. If you can let it go, let it go. Yeah. And also, when it, you want your spouse to do that for you, if you think about it, if there's something that you did that irritated them or whatever, you would want them, if they could, to let it go. Mm -hmm. And if they can't, then they need to bring it up. But 
you know, you want to do for them what you want them to do for you. And in general, we want to let as many things go as we can mm -hmm. and, and maintain peace. And so I think picking your battles makes it's really important because I cannot tell you how many times there would be something where I would think, oh, I want to say this. And then it's like, I would ask myself that question. Was it ruin worth ruining the whole day? No, it's not. No, it's not. So just don't say it. Mm -hmm. Let it go. So that for me, it wasn't so many times probably. <laughs> well, you know, I'm very, I'm a very outspoken person, very straightforward, <clears throat> very kind of direct bottom line kind of person. And so there's a lot of times that it, it would just be instinctual to me to just say whatever. And by having that filter of that question, there's a lot of things that I, I decided it wasn't wise to say that. I just let it go. Mm -hmm. Let it go. I want him to let things go when I do them. You know, like, so let it go. So those are our four tips, four tips for a great marriage. There's so many other things we could say, but those are some great starting points. But also, I want you to know that if you have not had a great marriage for a really long time, um, it can turn around. You, you can turn it around. God can turn it around. You and God together can turn it around. Remember that movie Fireproof? Mm -hmm. That was such a good example of that, right? Where they had such a bad marriage. There was so much resentment, so much hurt, so, much, so many wounds that had happened. But one of them, just one of the spouses, committed to being loving, to turning mm -hmm. the situation around, to giving and pouring out and being the, the one to lead the way in um, putting their spouse first. And it took a little while, if you remember that, I remember. And I think that's pretty accurate, right? Yeah. If, you have a, a, if you're struggling in your marriage, especially if it's been a really long time, it might take a little while to turn it around. But I want you to have hope that everything is possible, that with the Lord, all things are possible. And with you praying, with you obeying God and what he shows you to do with your spouse, um, who knows what could happen for your marriage. Or even if you have a pretty decent marriage, but it's just kind of gotten a little stale, same thing. Same thing, it can change, it can change. Pray, do what God shows you to do, be intentional, have hope, have faith, that it really can change and that you can have a great marriage. And when you have a great marriage, life is sweet. <laughs> it is. It's sweet. And with those four things, just pick one of them. Just start with one, start trying something, trying to communicate, mm -hmm. trying to um, go on a date or initiate something. So. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to do all four right away, but just pick something and just kind of stick with that and you'll see a difference. You really will. So. And how do you eat an elephant? One, One bite, bite at, at a time, time yep. right? So don't be overwhelmed by all the issues in your marriage. Pick, pick one, start working on it. Let your faith rise in, in knowing that you really can turn this around. And when you have a great marriage, it's also great for your kids, mm -hmm. for your grandkids, for your neighbors. Uh, it's such an example to people and it's a blessing to be, it's a blessing to have a great marriage. Yes. We, I, I love, I love my husband. I love my marriage. I love being with him. I choose to be with him every day of the week and twice on Sunday. And, and in fact, we are genuinely each other's best friends mm -hmm. and, and there's nothing, nothing as sweet as that kind of marriage. And so it's worth working for, I promise, cause we're experiencing it. Yeah. Um, but also for our kids, like all of our kids tell us, I hope I have the kind of marriage you have. Mm -hmm. My goal is to be like you. And so that's so wonderful. And it, and it creates really such a, a stable foundation. Or like if you're, gra if you're a grandparent, um, <coughs> what a great foundation for your family, for you to have a stable, strong marriage that your whole family can look at and emulate. And you know, it's something that is good to do is to ask yourself, do I have the kind of marriage that I would hope my kids would have? And if the answer is no, then you have some work to do mm -hmm. and you can do it. So marriage is sweet, it's worth it. And those are our tips for you today. I hope that it's been a blessing to you. I hope it's been a blessing to you. It has. Yes. Oh, somebody. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess that's it. <laughs> that's it. Hey, Hong Kong. <laughs> um, we're at the beach right now for our anniversary. So we're looking out at the ocean and uh, a car just drove by and honked. So. <laughs> Our anniversary is actually November 30th. Yeah, so we got it. We're celebrating nice. early. We got married Thanksgiving weekend of 1996. Mm -hmm. We were juniors in college, so we had a little long weekend. So we decided <laughs> to get married on that weekend because we cannot wait. We were going to wait until Christmas break, but we couldn't wait that long. Yeah. So we moved it up to Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah. <laughs> and fall is our favorite time of year. Yes. So it worked out. But 
All right, that's all we have for you today. God bless you and know that you are loved. See you next time. Hey, did you know that I sell products that you can purchase to help support The Rachel Ham Show and keep me producing more content for you? One of my favorites is CBD. This CBD is non-GMO, no synthetics, no fillers. It's American made and it has really improved my life, specifically with arthritis and pain. I also sell Superfoods, which is a line of amazing non-GMO organic products that are grown in California. Everything is American made and it is so, so good. Virusure is one you definitely wanna stock up on. It's a vitamin that they make for you to fight off viruses. And with winter coming, definitely a good idea to get some of that. And then of course, I have an amazing vitamin C product. The vitamin C product, which this is all part of the Superfoods line, is non-synthetic. Did you know that most vitamin C that you buy at any store even vitamin stores is synthetic. This is vitamin C from nature, all natural. Stock up today. Also, did you know that I wrote a book? Well, I did. I wrote an autobiography and it was a number one bestseller on Amazon. So you might want to check it out. I've had a pretty interesting life, done some pretty wild things, had some pretty amazing experiences, both good and bad, and kind of on both far ends of the spectrum. I've experienced supernatural in both the dark and light camps, and I've written about it. I've also written about my healing journey, and it's encouraging, inspiring, and hopeful. Check it out. You can get it at rachelham.com or on Amazon. And if you buy it on rachelham.com, it just sends you to Amazon. Another product that I have for you is an online course that I created called The Escape Artist, Escaping from the Prison of Fear and Anxiety. In my teens and 20s, I dealt with panic attacks, depression, and severe anxiety that was crippling. At times, I could barely leave my house. But I have been completely set free from that. So I decided to create a course for you to take so I can teach you how I got free from anxiety. So if you or anyone you know or love is struggling with anxiety, be sure and head over to Rachel hand.com go to products and scroll down until you get to the online course and you can watch the little trailer and then enroll if you would like to as well it's a fantastic thing that will set you free all of the links to these things are listed in the description box down below this video and you can also find all of this at rachelham.com all of the products i just mentioned are on the products page at rachelham.com and if you have appreciated what I have done for you with the show and you would like to give back, you can go to givesendgo.com forward slash Rachel Ham. Click on give, select the amount that you would like to give. There are a few pre-made ideas. You can also fill in any amount you want. You can also do a single donation or you can make it a monthly gift, which is so, so helpful to me because those monthly gifts make it where I can count on that amount. And I love it and I'm so grateful for it. Fill in your info, click continue, and you're done. For other ways to give, just go to rachelham.com, click on the little menu bar, and go down to Appreciate Rachel's Work, Give Here. Click on that, and then it will take you to this page where you can see the five different ways you can give. There's the Give, Send, Go link, so you can just click on that, Cash App, of course, PayPal still, Venmo, and you can click on any of those links to take you directly there. If you'd like to mail a gift, there's my mailing address. And from the bottom of my heart, I genuinely thank you for supporting me and my show. May you be blessed 100 fold. Be sure and like this video if you found it to be useful. And if you haven't already, be sure and subscribe to The Rachel Ham Show on Rumble and YouTube. Hey, let's connect. I am at The Rachel Ham on all media platforms.